Joining me is the panel, Liberal Senator James Patterson and Christy McSweeney, who has worked for Coalition Prime Ministers and Premiers. James Patterson, easing the restrictions, going back to work, means risking more infections. Is that a risk worth taking? Well, I think, Andrew, we can now start to look towards that because we are past what we thought, what we feared would be the worst of it. The doomsday scenarios that were forecast for Australia and other countries have not eventuated. Uh, we've gone nowhere near our ICU capacity, let alone our ventilator capacity. Our health system has not been overwhelmed. And so it is sensible, uh, I think, now to move towards opening up, opening up on the social restrictions and opening up on the economic restrictions, because the longer this goes on, the heavier the toll it will take on our economy and our societies. Josh Frydenberg said today it's costing us about $4 billion every week that we remain in this uh, relatively lockdown mode. Yeah, but is it risk worth taking? I mean, we seem to have gone from the point of having said, you know, uh, well, we can't afford anyone getting sick and dying to, well, we can't afford not having the facilities there to treat them if they get sick, and now we do, so we'll take that risk. That's where we've got to, isn't it? We've gone from one to the other. Well, Andrew, I think it's always been about managing the risk and making sure the risk is proportionate. Initially it was. Sure we Initially it was. Hmm. And and I think, it was, I but there was a bit in the middle where it wasn't so, you know. It was, it was really about, oh, we can't have any deaths, we can't have any infections. Well, I never heard the Prime Minister say that. I never said that, and I didn't hear the Health Minister say that either. Certainly some commentators did say that, Andrew, and I think some people did get a bit ahead of themselves with the idea that we could all uh, be locked in our homes in perpetuity and all be safe and secure. I mean, even if we didn't have a pandemic, there are still other ways of dying and getting sick, and I guess if we locked ourselves in our homes, we'd prevent all those deaths uh, and sickness as well but no one would seriously want to live uh, in that scenario. The only thing that justifies extreme measures is if they're very temporary, very short, for a very specific purpose. And I hope, yes. touch wood, that we're now getting past that period. Uh, Christy, uh, James is far too good and cunning and canny a politician, far too smart for me to say, yes, it is risk, uh, worth risking more death to open the economy. But essentially, that is the gamble, isn't it? And it is the gamble worth taking. Well, I'll try and be as canny uh, as Senator Payson. He's pretty good <laughs> at it. You'll never match him. Uh, You'll never match him. I never, I never will. That's why he's a senator for Victoria and I'm not. Uh, among many, many other reasons. Now, the... The uh, Treasurer of Victoria, Tim Pallas, announced last week, released um, Department of Treasury and Finance uh, state government modelling that a quarter of Victorian jobs could go by September, 270,000 jobs. Uh, and the graph that they released demonstrated that most of those jobs would go from Melbourne's services economy, which, of course, 30% uh, of Melbourne's economy is um, services, professional services, international education being um, the biggest export earner for Victoria over the last decade. With figures like that, uh, you would think the Victorian government would pitch in uh, and join the South Australian, West Australian and even the Berejiklian government, who Premier Berejiklian stood up last week and said, look, we're easing restrictions. We accept figures will rise. There will be a spike, uh, but we will ease people back to work, back to beaches uh, and back to schools. And I've made the point here before, Andrew, that I don't know why uh, the Australian Education Union has a vastly different view of safety uh, than the CFMMEU, who fought the Premier tooth and nail to keep working during the con in construction uh, when everybody else was uh, whose workplaces were shut down. And the Premier said, gave them the big tick and said, absolutely, uh, construction and property is too important to the Victorian economy, uh, but I there's a couple of different history. viewpoints here. I can solve that history. The teachers would not lose their jobs. They'd be uh, paid to stay at home. The CFMEU members, if their business goes bust, they could be out of a job. Um, James Patterson, um, what does it tell you that Victoria, which has had the toughest bans, is also the state which has had the biggest hit to unemployment? Nearly 9% of jobs have been lost in just a, a month and a half. I mean, was that price really worth what they did? Well, Andrew, I think it's fairly obvious there's a direct correlation between the strength of the restrictions you put in place and the economic impact that it has uh, on your economy. Uh, the more that you shut down, the bigger the impact's going to be. And New Zealand, for example, has gone even further than Australia or Victoria has, and I suspect will have a bigger economic impact as a result. And the data shows it doesn't really have a better health result uh, than we've been able to achieve 
with much softer uh, restrictions. We kept our construction industry open as an example, but also manufacturing. Both of those were closed in New Zealand. Almost all retail has been closed in New Zealand other than supermarkets. So it's going to have a very heavy toll there, um, as it is in other countries in Europe in particular, with a very severe lockdown. So uh, we should put in the, the minimum necessary uh, restrictions to achieve the desired health outcome because they come at a very, very high cost and we should remove them as soon as it's safe to do so. And as a Victorian, I'm getting a little bit envious of other states that are starting to relax and open up. Absolutely. New South Wales has more cases, active cases in the community than Victoria does, but in New South Wales, uh, two adults can go and visit another two adults who are not related to them in their home for purely social reasons. But uh, for some reason, I, I that find that incredible, not permitted incredible in Victoria. Restriction here. I know, I know. Hey, Christy, one of the health advisers advising that really extreme Victorian government, uh, the Deputy uh, Chief Health Officer, is uh, Annalise van Diemen. We mentioned last week, took time out from this crisis tweet about James Cook, uh, the explorer who landed in Botany Bay, uh, Sydney, uh, 250 years ago. Last week she tweeted, sudden arrival of invader from another land, decimating populations, creating terror. Uh, COVID-19 or James Cook, 1770. She's now been cleared by the government to be given, after being given counselling on how to use social media. Is that good enough? Well, I think she should probably stick to health advice and certainly not be moved to the education department, Andrew, at any time. Um, <laughs> but, look, public uh, figures and, and anybody who is uh, at, at the top of their health department during this crisis is indeed a public figure. Uh, there have been numerous articles uh, on Victoria's health bureaucrats uh, in the press here in Victoria. So it's not a surprise uh, that the media is at all interested uh, in the public announcements of a personal nature uh, of our top health bureaucrats. So I think it's an extreme lack of judgment uh, on her behalf. Look, she probably is an eminently qualified medical advisor, but if you want to dip your toe in, uh, you can fall in and sink sometimes. Yes, of course. And of course, this woman has been forgiven by the Labor government in Victoria, also retweeted a post attacking Prime Minister Scott Morrison is allegedly, oh, uh, better not use the word they uh, used, um, uh, hmm, thick, thick, it rhymes with thick, um, mates for starving people on the dole. So I just think uh, politics seems to play a role in who gets appointed to advise the government. James Patterson, Christy Bissweeney, thank you both so much for your time.